Hey guys, here's another one of those sitting down, just talking to your videos, which I know some of you really like, but a lot of you don't, because you say, Michelle, you ramble, your videos are too long, just get to the point, we want to see something really polished and nice, and what's the take-home message, what's the bottom line? Well, you know, maybe I don't want to do those kind of videos at this very moment in time. I've got stuff to talk about, so I just want to sit down and talk about them. So get yourself a brew and join me. Today I want to talk about family vloggers. Now, we have talked quite a bit in the vegan community of late about family channels. People who have got, who are vegan and who've got children and they want to talk about their children. On, online and what's wrong with that absolutely nothing what's wrong with putting your children on social media sharing your children's photographs and their achievements and things like that on Facebook or Instagram to your online friends what's wrong with that absolutely nothing right so please don't get me wrong I am not trying to censor children on the internet that's not the point that I'm making in this video not at all. Before you go any further and start ranting in the comments about censorship, as some of you did to the video that I, I did about Eugenia recently, missed the point completely. In this video, I want to talk about the problems with family vloggers. It's not a problem that is about sharing your child's achievements or you do videos with your children that's fine. That's not a problem. I, I, I've had children on my channel. In the vegan community, there has been a problem with anti-vegans taking children's photographs or taking screenshots of them in videos and making videos about them. That's absolutely out of order. And that is, that is the, it's a misuse of children's data. I don't know how YouTube allows it, but they do. There's a deeper issue about family vloggers on the internet, particularly on YouTube and Instagram, where families who've got kids who's, who are making a living out of, I'm going to say, exploiting their children for views, for clicks, for, for sponsorships. And there are many of them out there and they are getting millions and millions of views both on YouTube and Instagram. They're getting thousands of pounds per video out of sponsorships. I follow the Dad Challenge podcast. I don't watch all of his videos, but I've been following him for a while. Um, I came across him um, when he was doing videos on the Micah and James Storfer situation. I did a video on it when it was kind of hot news. Don't think many people saw it, but I made a video about it anyway. Just a quick reminder on that one. James and Micah Storfer, well known. They've got numerous channels. James storfer has got like a car car repair channel. Mm -hmm. um, and <coughs> and Micah Storfer had a family channel and they had a channel together, like a family vlog channel. And their, their social media blew up when they adopted a little boy. I'm not going to say his name actually because he's uh, he's been adopted into a new family now, but we'll just say. Look, they, they adopted a little boy from China who had autism and I think a lot of behavioural issues because he was, he was, you know, he was taken from an orphanage in China. Of course he was going to have behavioural issues, but they got to a point where they couldn't handle him and they gave him away. <laughs> they, they gave him away to another family. But during this Chinese adoption, their channel blew up. And then he was all over their social media and they got a lot of deals. And they just got so much money from it. They moved into this, you know, posh new house. And, and, uh, and yeah, and what, but once it kind of, they broke it, people just constantly asking, where's, where's the, where's your son, where's your son, where's your son? And conveniently, they'd had another baby. So they were making money off this new baby. I'll come on to birth videos shortly. They were making lots of money off this new baby. Maybe they didn't need the little Chinese adopted son anymore to make them money. 
It was pretty outrageous at the time. And Dad Challenge podcast made a lot of videos about it. He kind of made it his life's work to expose everything that Mike and James Stauffer were doing. And he still makes videos about uh, Mike and James Stauffer, but he's moved on to something that is much more interesting. He's been looking at the analytics um, that sit behind family vlogger channels. These channels that are huge. And he's using a site that he has to pay for if you want to look at some of the analytics that sit behind um, fam these well-known family vlog channels, then this video and this video are the ones that are really, really interesting. I'll just leave a link to his channel, um, I think, and then you can look, because he's got other videos as well. You can look yourself if you want to. Um, so he's got the analytics for these family vlog channels and um, it's shocking. It's absolutely shocking. Because what you can do is, um, I'll show you. Any of you that have got a YouTube channel, you'll have the ability to be able to go behind the scenes into YouTube Studio and look at your analytics. This is what the audience section of the analytics looks like. So I can find out all sorts of stuff from here. So when my subscribers are most likely to be online. So when is the best time to put out a video? Um, in the last 28 days, how many of my videos have been watched by subscribers versus non-subscribers, which is interesting because my non-subscribers used to be a lot higher, which I, I think is why my views have dropped. My key subscribers are watching my videos, but it's not, they're not getting the reach that they used to get. And, and I used to get more people from the US watching. That used to be pretty even, anyway. But it's the age and gender that I'm gonna be talking about in relation to Dad Challenge podcast and family vloggers. So you can see mine. So I'm 60% of my audience is male and about 40% is female. That's the age groups. And I can actually do it for males and females. So males being the purple, females being the blue. So the majority of my subscribers overall are between 25 and 44. But that's interesting, isn't it? That 35 to 44, the majority are male. Interesting. I don't know why that is. I don't care why that is really. Tell me why you watch my videos, I guess, would be the answer. But yeah, so Dad Challenge Podcast has been able to pay to look behind the scenes at the analytics of some mega big family vloggers. And I've got to say that these are channels that I've never watched before. I've no intention of watching before. And some of them I'd never heard of before. Family vlog channels where it's about babies and young children and about home life and, and cleaning, cleaning up, cleaning videos and boxing videos cooking with the family videos, those types of things, the vast majority are watched by females, adult women, women who've got babies and, and who want to talk about shopping and home life and, and shit like that. Channels like the Starfer Garage, the um, car repair channel, the vast majority are male. The interesting thing though, that, that um, Dad Challenge podcast, his name's Josh, let's just call him Josh, that Josh has, um, has uncovered, which is pretty shocking, the family vlog channels where there, there are teenagers, particularly teenage girls, the ratio of males to females watching changes from that traditional majority, let's say 95% or 90% female, to more like 30 or even 40% male in some cases. And these are not young males, like in the teenage group, who maybe, you know, have a crush on this teenage member of the family. No, this is adult males. So I'll let you draw your own conclusions. And what Josh is arguing that a lot of these kind of vlog channels, whether they mean it or not, these teenagers are being sexualized by, by men. And he's even dug into some of the profiles of these men watching. And they've got like playlists that are, you know, the, the public 
and even some of the channels that have got babies this is this is disturbing like there's playlists like littles or diapers like and they're literally playlists that are full of videos with babies running around in diapers it's it's very very concerning these family vlog channels must know who their audience is it, it's impossible for them not to have checked their analytics ever so they know these videos are getting watched by by men you know these these massive family vlog channels you know they've all got all massive youtube channels have got a management or a, a youtube manager or you know that that helps them make money the only mega big family vlog channel that i'm aware of is family fizz now family fizz i'm aware of these guys because they used to be called back in the day when i was a brand new vegan 2016 back then they were called um vegan what were they called vegan fitness tv and then they changed it to vegan family tv at the time they had mia and sienna yeah the channel blew up and then they decided to take, they're still vegan, but they, they decided to take the vegan out of the channel name because they realised that it, that was limiting their reach. And they just blew up. They blew up massively. So now they're on like 2.35 million subscribers. I think they were on about, I want to say about 40,000, something like that, when I used to watch them. Um, and they've become very, you know... Some of them are really silly and I, I don't watch them anymore. I've not even subscribed, not even been subscribed to them for like ever. Um, but, you know, it's it's more kind of kid oriented, you know, Mia's 16th birthday. Let's ruin Mia's 16th birthday. Mia's presents, you know, all about them. They, they, they're getting like 500, 600,000 views per video. I'm not saying that these guys are exploiting their children they, they do pranks on each other but they're, they're kind of aware of it and there's a lot of acting going on and stuff but their children have grown up online like sienna was like four i think when they started to really blow up mia's now 16 and she has her own channel mia's life with over a million subscribers and she's written books and it's all focused on like teenage problems i would be interested to know how because she does dress up and kind of make up and and stuff like that and, and and why shouldn't she she's 16 why shouldn't she um but i'd, I'd be interested to know what her because you'd think that it, this would be aimed at teenage girls but how many of her viewers are actually adult men family fizz concerned me somewhat when they had two more children so they they were fine with their family they had Mir and Sienna they were they were doing kind of some traveling they lived in Spain for a while and and then they they said they weren't having any more kids and then they decided to have another child which is perfectly within their rights to do so and they vlogged the entire pregnancy and then they filmed the birth so this would have been related to karma because like, two years ago so she's going to give birth preparing her house for home birth and these videos got a massive amount of views you know like this was nearly oh no that's Coas. i'll come on to him shortly and then they decided to have another baby and they did exactly the same so this is this is Coas birth video my question is right, if you want to film yourself giving birth fine but why put it online I, 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 I'm concerned right and there's loads of these channels now and, and Josh argues that they're getting pregnant purposefully and I'm not saying that was the case with family fears I don't know whether that was the case with family fears or whether that's the case with any of these family vlog channels but pregnancy and birth are big 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 business on youtube and they they film it i mean these guys even because they were living in dubai when she was pregnant with koa and they even came back to the uk because they couldn't have a home birth in dubai and they, they couldn't film it 
in Dubai. Being somewhat cynical here, but they couldn't film it. Maybe. It's her choice, isn't it? It's her choice. And I'm not saying that they shouldn't film the birth of their children. But my question is, what about those kids as they grow up? That's Karma. She's two now. And she, her birth video was on, on here. It got millions of views. I think it's that one, or maybe not. Maybe they, t maybe, maybe they've taken it off, because it's not popped up. Meet our new baby. Do you see? See, look at that. I mean, that thumbnail there. I mean, innocent. Is it? Is it? Is it is it click worthy? Of course it is. So how many of these videos are being watched by men? Again, I'd be interested in their analytics. But for those kids, like Karma's like two now, and her birth was recorded from like literally the day she popped out, and that's Koa who's literally just popped out. We don't know the answer to this. Like, you know, child actors have been a thing for, for as long as, as cinema has been a thing, but child actors have, have just anecdotally speaking, tend to suffer a little bit psychologically, not all of them, obviously. But we just don't know what this generation of kids literally growing up online, having their, having their birth recorded online their entire life is online. We don't know what that's going to do to them in the future. It might mean that they have an absolutely fantastic future, right? You know, Mia here, Mia Fizz, she's got a million subscribers on YouTube. Does she need to get a job? No, <laughs> she doesn't. Concerns me a little bit for, for various reasons. So I think Josh is right in, in digging into all of this. I mean, he's even gone so far as to say, get children off the internet completely. And I, I don't I don't agree with that at all. Um, but I think children need to be much more protected online. And I think ultimately that should be the job of the parents to do that. And um, shame on those who are exploiting their children to make money out of sponsorships and stuff like that. But Josh Shays is coming for you. He's actually been copyright struck. Um, one of the channels that he's talked about is trying to get him offline. Um, so he's been copyright struck. So he's not been able to upload for a while. <laughs> he's fighting it. He's normally pretty good, actually. Um, he's normally, you know, he doesn't he doesn't tend to show very much of of the actual vlogs. He's very good, and and when he does, he he blocks out the children's faces. So I don't know how they've managed to copyright strike him. But we know some of co some copyright strikes are, are damn out of order, don't we? So that'll be interesting to see when, when he comes back. But anyway, there we go. What do you think? Just a little ramble. These things are stuff that I think is relevant to the vegan community. But it's massively relevant to anybody who's got children who have um, a, a social media presence. If you've got a YouTube channel and you include your kids in some of your videos, have a look at your analytics because you can you you, <coughs> you can look at the analytics per video as well as for your channel overall. So just have a look um, and and see. And I know Family Fizz will never watch this video, but um, I'd be interested to know what their analytics look like. I'd be very very interested to know what their analytics look like. Thumb up the video if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't. Whatever. Subscribe to the channel. If you're a non-subscriber watching my channel, subscribe. Speak to you tomorrow. Bye, folks.